Welcome back to Open BXRX. BX Film 48 is the Bronx Film Initiative seeking to create a safe and vibrant creative space for all filmmakers in the Bronx. They have an exciting challenge coming up and they're inviting you to create a film indoors in just 48 hours. Joining us now to discuss the second annual Bronx 48 Hour Film Challenge and more are Ayari Perez and Edwin Torres of BX Film 48. Thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you for, your time. Thank you for having us. Of course. So to start off, um, let's just learn a little bit about BX Film 48. Um, tell us the, the initiative, about the initiative, the mission behind it, and all that good stuff. Uh, yes. So basically, uh, the Bronx 40 Hour Film Challenge, uh, we started this last year, uh, really uh, really inspired by the, uh, the 48 Hour Film Project, which is usually held in like Brooklyn, maybe sometimes Manhattan, but uh, figured traveling an hour and a half to go to a film challenge is not uh, not very ideal for someone living in the Bronx. So um, it was definitely a problem for me. So uh, definitely we wanted to localize that challenge. We wanted to bring that challenge, but bring it to the Bronx, but also make it our own. So uh, basically the concept is uh, just the same to uh, we were giving filmmakers a chance to write, uh, film and edit and release a short film in 48 hours in one weekend just one very hyper intense uh no sleep weekend um, right so <laughs> this year in February, you guys have transitioned to an indoor initiative can you tell us more about that um what is it how will it work and who can participate in this indoor film challenge yes yeah, so our 48 hour film challenge this year will be indoors uh and it's something that we kind of um we're debating on how to proceed with the challenge this year due to the circumstances that we're in, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic and, um, you know, how to proceed with the challenge and still maintain everybody safe. So we decided to do it indoors. It is going to be a virtual kickoff, virtual screening. And, um, yeah, it's really, you know, you could use any interior space that you have like, access to. Right. And just making the same yes. different different types of elements, so stay tuned for the... Yeah, and just to add, add on to that, um, just really due to COVID-19, like, we just wanted to ensure the safety of our participants, like, because uh, normally we would have a, uh, you know, we would have required elements, and one of those elements would be um, to actually go to a Bronx landmark, you would pick it out mm -hmm. of a hat or a bucket and actually go there and film it, so we know that you at least film that part in the Bronx, who actually came here to film. Uh, but since it's um, the challenge, since, you know, COVID-19, everything's different this year, indoor challenge, we wanted to uh, basically like even the playing field by having it, everybody can film inside the safety of their homes and it's a citywide competition. So it doesn't matter if you live in the Bronx, you can still participate. Got so you. it's a challenge on top of a challenge because it's indoors. Oh, okay, nice. Um, so I also wanted to talk about, um, you know, on your platform, you you use the hashtag time to create. Um, and there's a power in film and creativity in times like this of civil unrest and the pandemic as well. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Just the power of film and creativity in times of hardship that we're going through right now. Um, yes, I can kind of jump in on this one. Um, so I think the importance of creating right now, it's super, super relevant because Filmmaking in itself, it's such a collaborative process and you it really makes an opportunity for filmmakers or any kind of creators to work together and really influence each other, learn from each other, inspire each other. And it makes room for growth and really learning from each other. And um, something I was reading this morning um, that like kind of like brought me some clarity to this question actually it was like, no one is really independent. Like we are all interdependent and we gotta let our art and filmmaking show our humanity. So I think that's why creating right now during a pandemic, during um, such civil unrest right now is really to, you know, share our truths and reclaim our narratives too, like share what we have to say and archiving our voices to really, you know, not even just for us, but for future generations to come. Like this is such a historic moment moment that we're li living in. So, you know, using art as healing, filmmaking as liberating and healing too. Yes. Oh, no, I absolutely agree. And I love that so much. Thank you, Ayaris, for sharing that. Um, right before um, COVID-19, the BX Film 48, um, there was an, an incredible networking mixer that you guys had. Um, and then the, the pandemic hit. How has the pandemic impacted your work as a collective? Because I know there are four of you right behind the BX Film mm -hmm. 48 initiative. So you all are still working together remotely. But how has this entire thing just impacted your work and put it kind of like 
on the back burner a little bit for a while. Oh my goodness. Uh, we got, uh, yeah, we got so incredibly lucky, like beyond lucky to have that space. Uh, shout out to Dream Yards BX Start for, and Rudy Blanco for having this, uh, have that event in that space. Um, and yes, uh, so basically it's so much, uh, basically it all started with like lots of Google Meets, uh, so much Google Meets, so much Zoom, um, and just really talking and deciding like, okay, like, you know, are we able to still do this? Can we do this? Um, but uh, yeah, it's really just impacting, you know, everything is remotely. Basically, I, I had to turn my uh, my room into a, an office. And um, yeah, I just uh, really, really, I guess like the workflow is like kind of the same. It's just like at home, but yeah, a lot of it was just brainstorming like, okay, how could we do this effectively? Would people even be able to do this? Um, and yeah, really just, uh, you know, because we got a lot of feedback and the networking event and people still were telling us that they still were wondering if something was happening. So just with that curiosity, we wanted to make sure that people were still able to have something to uh, participate in and really just to really have a creative outlet because there's so many stories that still need to be told. There's so many things that like, that can serve as like a microcosm for what's happening right now. I think that what people do, what artists make now is gonna, could have a tremendous impact on what happens in the future. Yes, yes. Oh yes, I agree with that. And I also wanted to ask about the impact of COVID-19 on cinema in general. As we know, movie theaters are still closed and film productions are completely on pause. What will cinema look like post COVID and how can we support our local filmmakers like here in the Bronx? Um, yes. So I've seen a lot of, uh, I, first of all, I think, uh, I've, I've seen a lot of posts of like, uh, AMC, uh, might not even survive, um, this, uh, hopefully not. Cause AMC was one of the only theaters I had access to, uh, Bay Plaza. So hopefully there's still something there at the end of this. I've seen posts where, uh, I've seen articles where people are physically removing chairs from, from the actual seats in a the theater. Um, I don't know how sustainable that would be, but, uh, and also drive-in movie theaters are making a comeback. I just learned about um, a drive-in movie theater at Orchard Beach actually running, uh, run by Tribeca, uh, which should be cool. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think the other end of this, like like after when people are actually able to go into the movie theater, I think it's going to be crazy. Uh, I think there's gonna be like maybe another renaissance. Uh, and uh, I think to a way to support like, you know, really to support the local filmmakers happening now is uh, that are still putting out stuff is like, just consume their content, your friend's content, like you would consume Netflix or YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Some think this time has really, oh, I'm sorry. No, this time has really like allowed us to like create and it's been such a moment for us to reflect and really be able to get our ideas out. So I think there's definitely gonna be an increase in the way films are created um, for our phone. You know, there's Quibi now too. So the way films are going to be distributed and out there, it's definitely going to be, I think, more accessible too. And um, really just supporting, sharing your friend's content, you know, sending it out to um, friends that are, you think are going to be watching it, that it's going to be something good for them, networking with their art. Right. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot, of, a lot of quick turnover with projects. Mm -hmm. Filmmakers out on the forefront recording um, protests and yes. going through all of yes. these, you know, doing so much during this time and not letting their creativity kind of stifle them, but also lending their craft to the people out on the forefront as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I appreciate um, filmmakers out there doing their thing right now and kind of like turning the whole production around on their own in terms of like post and, and pre mm -hmm. everything. Um, I wanted to also bring up, let's go back to the film um, 48 challenge that's coming up. Um, one important thing that I wanna bring up to the, to the viewers, if you don't know about this challenge, it's open to anyone. So even if you don't have experience, um, the guys here like BX Film 40, mm -hmm. they're really open to anyone joining this. Tell us more about that. So yes, um, thank you for amplifying that. Yes, that's such a great point. Um, it's really open to any age, no experience whatsoever. It doesn't really matter, you know, if you don't have the best camera out there, like you could use your phone, you know, whatever's accessible to you. We had someone last year film an entire film with their phone, with their iPhone. So really, um, yeah, it's open to anyone. If you want to learn a little bit more about our challenge, we just launched our website too. So it has some of the elements that we are going to be using this year the prices, which are pretty dope. Um, and um, really, it's just a safe space for you to learn your craft. You know, you can never be um, failing if you're trying and learning. So this is your chance to do it. 
Yeah, it's really an opportunity for people to just jump right in, uh, especially for people. We had a filmmaker last year that never, um, he won a, uh, one of his, uh, in the actors in his film, won for best like acting. Uh, so, but he had never made a film before that. Mm -hmm. So we just want to provide that opportunity for anybody that's really never known or had that push to make a film. It's like, all right, here's a thing, here's a weekend where it's just all, you can just focus all all on that. And that's, uh, that's what we want to provide for people. Right, and the challenge this year is completely free, right, to join? Yes. yes. Um, give us all the information that we need. How can people connect with you guys, find out more about the indoor challenge and sign up? What's the deadline? So uh, so basically uh, we're going to have a kickoff on July 10th. Um, we, uh, we are going to, so basically like in a lot of ways to contact us is basically uh, our email at uh, bxfilm48 at gmail.com with uh, any questions, but uh, yeah, so basically, um, you know, we're, you know, you have to film it indoors in your home. Uh, so even if you have like a balcony or a backyard, uh, we're not really allowing that just to really, you know, make sure everybody has an equal chance to make a dope film. Um, and yeah, there's still gonna be uh, required elements. So during the kickoff, we're still gonna have people, we're gonna use this app called Wheel Decide where like a, kind of a virtual spin the wheel and then it'll land on a genre. We're still gonna have like, people have to pick a genre um, and then a line and a, a line and a prop that we're going to choose, where, which actually we had a poll for. Um, so now we're gonna look at the results for that and actually decide what the what's what has to be in your film so that people don't cheat. Got you. And Ayara, um, just like some ideas for a film, like we're all home right now. So you can literally just make a film about anything, but there is a genre that you have to stick to. Can you give us like, just one example of something someone can do without, you know, exploring too much into like the plot? And all that <laughs> stuff? Um, no, it's, it's, I've actually never participated in a 48 hour film challenge. Um, this was the year I told myself I was going to do it. So I'm going to put myself in those shoes and pretend, you know, that I will do it this year. Um, I think really relying on your team more than anything because you know you nothing is nothing works in isolation so relying on your team and listening for everybody's feedback okay like how can we make this work it might be like a genre that i'm not necessarily familiar with say like a horror movie like i've never done a horror film so um really i think this is when you rely on your teammates too and figure out how to approach this um because you probably have much more to learn from them than you can yeah I love it. Thank you both so much for joining us today, Ayaris and Edwin from the BX Film 48 Initiative. Wow, thank you so much for having us. Yes, of course. So folks, as you heard, the second annual Bronx 48 Hour Film Challenge will be kicking off on Friday, July 10th at 5 p.m. If you're interested in creating a film, no matter your skill level, you can visit bronxfilm48.com and click challenge to find out more information. Also follow at bxfilm48 for updates and to stay in touch with the team on Instagram. That's all for our show today. Thank you for joining us on BXRX. I'm your host, Sanji Lopez, wishing you and your family safety and wellness now and always. Until next time.